3D printing is a rapidly growing industry with over $3 billion of annual revenue in 2013 that is expected to exceed $21 billion by 2020. Fueling this growth are applications in virtually every major industry. Aerospace and aviation, agriculture, automotive, and of course, healthcare. 3D printing technologies are increasingly used to produce patient-specific products, such as customized dental implants and prosthetic limbs. How does 3D printing work? To answer that question, we need to examine the underlying technologies that enable the 3D printing process. The formal industry name for 3D printing is additive manufacturing, which describes the process of adding layer upon layer of material to form a three-dimensional object. This process is different from some of the traditional manufacturing processes that you may know, such as carving, injection molding, and casting. Generally speaking, there have been three fundamental ways to create objects throughout human history. Additive manufacturing, subtractive manufacturing, and formative manufacturing. Let's learn more about manufacturing fundamentals from Stephen Keating at MIT. When we're looking at how to make things, you can broadly categorize it into three categories. If you're adding material, say you're taking clay and adding it together, it's additive fabrication. If you take that ball of clay and you remove parts of it, you're removing material, which is subtractive fabrication. And the third process is if you're just actually sculpting that clay around, you're not adding or removing material, you're just moving it around, it's formative fabrication. And those are the three general categories. A common example of additive fabrication would be 3D printers. And we're seeing them more and more these days. It's actually a technology that was developed back in the early 80s. But in the last decade, the availability of computer software and lower cost 3D printers means that field is expanding. For subtractive fabrication, uh, a really simple example is peeling a carrot. So you've got your carrot and you're actually peeling, you're removing material from it, and that's a subtractive process. And more common uses of subtractive fabrication include drilling and milling and machining, all ways of removing material to end up with the final product that you want. For formative fabrication, we can think of taking a ball of clay and actually just sculpting it. So you're not removing or adding material, you're just shifting it around, and that's a great example of a formative fabrication process. Compared to subtractive and formative manufacturing, additive manufacturing technologies allow us to fabricate incredibly complex products with minimal lead time and waste. We will dive deeper into the advantages of additive manufacturing and 3D printing in the second module of this course. You might have heard of other terms often used in tandem with additive manufacturing or 3D printing, such as rapid prototyping, which refers to the early use of 3D printing to quickly build a prototype model in the pre-production phase. For more on the difference between rapid prototyping and additive manufacturing, let's hear from one of our experts, Dustin Headley from Kansas State University. And so rapid prototyping really speaks to some of the technologies that happen on a smaller scale where you're trying to do something very rapidly and sometimes it doesn't matter if it fails, you're not really trying to look for a whole lot of performance criteria outside of generally getting like a form or a fit to work. Additive manufacturing is really looking at it at a very different scale. You're trying to produce something that will function, will perform, will actually be something that uh, might fit into a mechanical setup that actually function for that. Looking at the rapid prototyping, that really falls in the category of what I've been doing with veterinary medicine, which has direct implications into medicine. And so what we've done there is looking at doing diagnostics for surgical procedures where we have a dog, or and it can be a human just as easily, that has been CT scanned with some kind of physical bone deformity or fracture. And based on that, we can then quickly, within a matter of hours, rapid prototype the condition at full scale so the surgeon can go through, review that content, and actually have that thing to, one, show the patient what the procedure will entail, and then also it enables them to figure out how they can make the least invasive procedure possible. Additive manufacturing, that's really looking at that in a very different perspective. Say you, you have someone who broke their wrist or something like that, and you want to make a cast or something, and that needs to have uh, a durability to it and a certain life expectancy to it. Whereas doing a rapid prototype, like stuff 
in SLA where we're dealing with uh, the photosensitive resins, if it gets too much sun exposure, the resin will become very brittle, it's going to fracture and fall apart and disintegrate, it's also going to deform over time. So it's not going to be a viable thing that we want to put out in the universe. And in the terms of doing something at a, as a rapid prototype, doing something where we have a dog or a human that has a bone deformity and they're going to have to have a corrective surgery, the bone deformity itself can be quickly rapid prototyped uh, and that's disposable. We can do it on the UV sensitive resin on the SLA. And what that will enable us to do is the surgeon can use that to plan the procedure, to explain the procedure to a patient, uh, and then basically dispose of that once it's done. In the case of additive manufacturing, if you're going to be building something like a cast for someone, this based on the condition that you're trying to correct or the, in order to aid in healing, that's going to need to have some durability and that's where you're going to get in some additive manufacturing. There are several technologies underlying 3D printing and different printers use different techniques. The American Society for Testing and Materials, ASTM, developed a set of standards that classify the 3D printing process into seven categories. If you'd like to learn more about each of these technologies, you can read about them in the additional reading section. For the purpose of this course, we will focus on a few 3D printing processes that are widely adopted in healthcare and related fields, including fused deposition modeling, or FDM, stereolithography, or SLA, and selective laser sintering, or SLS. The first is fused deposition modeling, or FDM. FDM is a technology that's based on uh, filament, usually plastic, uh, PLA, or ABS, but uh, essentially the way that works is it's a tube of toothpaste that uh, squirts out of a nozzle uh, in very, very thin layers uh, to build up the, uh, the print itself. And so what that means is that's really the stuff that you guys have seen pretty typically in the market. For $300 you can get a 3D printer. Uh, and those are all more accessible because all the patents on those have expired. Uh, and then there's SLA, Stereolithography 3D Printing, and that's based on uh, ultraviolet light used to cure a photosensitive resin. And so if you guys have seen anything, um, uh, Form 1 uh, is probably the big game in town for that. But the way that that works is they just basically fire the laser into a primordial goop and then the, the print itself emerges up out of that, uh, that fluid. The other technology that I've engaged specifically is uh, SLS and that's Selective Laser Sintering. And that technology effectively uses a laser to um, bake a powder bed together, layer by layer. So if you imagine having a bed of powder, um, it, the laser will fire and sort of cook that into a plastic disc uh, or whatever you're printing. And then it'll scrape another layer on top of that and it'll basically print another layer. On, uh, and so it builds that up, up, up and up and up. Uh, and so based on the type of plastic that you're using, uh, you can get flexible plastics, you can get very durable plastics out of that methodology. Um, and because of the format, you can also do much more complex forms. It's a much more reliable and stable technology. Um, versus the other two where you have to actually print scaffolds to support those things. And a lot of the times that uh, causes those prints to fail. Don't worry if the names of these technologies still sound a bit foreign to you at this point. With time, you will master them. Hod Lipson and Melba Kerman, authors of the book Fabricated, The New World of 3D Printing, proposed an eloquent method of delineating 3D printing technologies into two categories. The first deposits layers of raw material, and the second binds raw materials. Depositing style printers squirt or squeeze liquid paste or powdered raw materials into layers through a syringe or a nozzle to create a 3D object. Binding printers use a laser or heat to solidify raw materials and thereby bind them together into a 3D object. In this module, we learn the definition of 3D printing, explored the relationship between 3D printing additive manufacturing, and rapid prototyping, and looked into the essential technologies that enable 3D printing. Does stereolithography fall into the depositing or the binding family? Check your understanding in the post-lesson quiz now. See you next time.